Zhang Suixiang is going in search of drinking water. It's a long trek from her home. She makes this journey every week, in good weather or bad. She has no choice. Ne laz tong shui shang zer le lu la zi na la le shui ne tong shui chu liang gang neng chi zi ge le bei guang chi ne ne ge hu eh bu neng si zi shang si. Her husband is busy farming, and children are away at school. She must manage this on her own. It wasn't always like this. Until recently, she drew water from a well in her own backyard. The irony is that they live quite close to the Yellow River, the sixth longest in the world. Over the past 20 years, people here have watched how their water supply became more scarce and more polluted. Zhang's husband Wang Yulin knows this all too well. When the river water became too dirty to use, people here started tapping groundwater. They dug wells, and water was never too deep, but not for long. The people of Wujiatong are literally running out of water. What little they can find is often not fit for drinking or household use. It's a problem shared by millions of other people across China. This village is close to Lunshu, the capital city of Gansu province in northwestern China. For centuries, it was a gateway to Central Asia. Today, it's a modern city of over three million people. Lunshu is located on the upper coast of the Yellow River, soon after the river emerges from the mountains. The river flows from west to east through China on a journey of more than 5,000 kilometers. Locals call it the Huanghe River, and its basin is known as the Cradle of Chinese Civilization. It has been associated with China's prosperity for thousands of years. The Yellow River Basin is home to nearly a third of China's population. It grows a good part of the country's food and also produces half of the coal and a quarter of the petroleum. All this has come with a high environmental cost. Today, the river carries a heavy load of pollutants and sediments. And by the late 1990s, downstream Yellow River was running completely dry for part of the year because its waters were dammed upstream for irrigation and power generation. Most part of the Huanghe River is located under the uh, semi-arid and arid um, zone, uh, especially the middle region is in the loose plateau where the erosion is very serious and uh, uh, it's the source of the sediment of the uh, Huanghe River. So this sediment really causes a big problem for the uh, health of the Huanghe River Basin. Coping with too much or too little water is always a challenge in the Yellow River Basin. It receives two-thirds of annual rainfall during a few weeks from July to September. As a result, 
floods often alternate with droughts. A new study cautions that climate change can aggravate the existing challenges of managing the Yellow River waters. The UN Environment Programme recently commissioned a team of scientists to study the vulnerability of water resources in Northeast Asia. They looked at five river basins. Besides the Yellow River, they covered the Yangtze River Basin and Songliao River Basin in China. And in Mongolia, they studied the basins of the Orkhon River and the Tul River. Professor He Huang headed the team of researchers. These three main findings uh, is uh, water shortage, uh, no water use efficiency, and a good initiative to uh, um, improve watershed management. One challenge is how to share the available water between agriculture, domestic users, power generation, and industry. Right now, more than half of all water drawn in Northeast Asia is used for growing crops, most of it through irrigation. Yet, irrigation here is not very efficient. I think we have to find some way to reuse, reuse this, um, the waters used in agricultural sector. Right now, these waters used in agriculture, they just flow downstreams. And so if we can find a way to, uh, to reuse, recycle this water, we could save a lot of uh, waters. In recent years, experts have pointed out ways to use water more efficiently. One is to apply drip irrigation instead of flooding the farmlands. Another is rainwater harvesting, which captures and stores water for later use. The UNEP study highlighted water pollution as the biggest threat at the moment to people and the environment. It recommended urgent and sustained action to reduce pollution. So the, we emphasize the pollution here. It's because the pollution is the impact which you can control by human beings. Some water users in the Yellow River Basin feel that pollution issues are finally receiving attention. In the coming years, however, water users across this basin will simply have to get used to the Yellow River carrying less water. A number of factors have contributed to this decline, including the diversion of Yellow River waters further upstream. Scientists confirm what ordinary people have noticed. Temperatures are slowly going up, while rainfall is reducing in many parts of the river basin. Lakes and wetlands are shrinking in size. For this and other river basins in Northeast Asia, the UNEP study has strongly recommended what is known as integrated water resource management. That basically means the different institutions must better coordinate what they do with the river's waters, when and how? Unless we deal with this whole these issues together in an integrated manner, and it is uh, not easy to tackle the water resource issues in this region and climate change. This will be the big challenge in the future. This is not easy when there are many competing demands on a river's waters. Few river users think of their impact on others downstream. So technically, we recommend the uh, uh, ingredient of water resource management for whole river basin. But how to uh, manage the river beyond the administrative boundary, it, it is still a challenge. For a decade, 
the Yellow River Conservancy Commission has been doing this difficult balancing act. China's example can set the tone for the whole region. In Northeast Asia, I think China's leadership is very important. As we all know, China has a rapid growing economy and with huge population. And so uh, if China alone could practice the water resource efficiency, efficiency and increase the water resource efficiency, then it will have a great impact to not only to the Northeast Asia, but to other uh, countries in Asia region. No one can predict all the effects that climate change would have on the water, land, and ultimately the people. But countries can prepare for these challenges by taking better care of their water.